what we're going to do is we're going to learn today about the difference between we have a standard. It's actually, they will refer to it in your lecture as general form, your book. So I'll put that as general form. A lot of different textbooks will call it different things, by the way. Most, be, oh, excuse me, not different things, but they'll go between calling it general form and standard form. But I believe you guys are referring to this as general form in your textbook. But we're going to kind of learn to go between general form and vertex form. Okay. Anyway, um, and there's a lot of information that we can get from these these uh, functions. Before I begin, though, with actually getting into a problem, I want to go over something with you guys, okay? And that would be um, this function, this new kind of notation you're being exposed to. Um, this function notation is really something that, that you'll get into more in depth in Algebra 2. But um, when you see the difference, you'll see the problems written in this format with a Y. And then you'll go to another problem and you'll see it written as f of x is equal to, you know, a bunch of mess. It really is just telling you, it's a notation that's telling us what to plug in for x. Okay, so if I give you this, let's say, what you would have seen as, say, maybe y is equal to 2x squared minus x before, you could probably see it written as f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x. And so what's going on here is if we want to, maybe we want to evaluate this equation at x equal to uh, negative 2. What we would do with the function notation now, you would see that written down here now as um, f at negative 2. In other words, x is negative. It's just saying plug a negative 2 in for x. And so you'll come back, open the parentheses like I had shown you guys many times before, use the template, you know, where you open the parentheses and you come in and you stick your negative 2 in there, okay? That's basically all it's telling you to do. That's an input, saying that negative 2 is what you're going to input to get an output value. Okay, and so let's go ahead and do this one just to warm up, get our numbers, the numbers in our heads, uh, get, them, get them working. So um, let's see. Okay, so oh, I don't want to erase her. Okay, so now we would go here and do negative 2 squared, bring everything else down, and we'd have 2 times 4, right? And so the opposite of negative 2 becomes plus 2. Okay. And then we have 8 plus 2, and we crank out a 10, right? So we have an input or an x value, and we have a y value or an f of x value. y and f of x are interchangeable, in other words. So when you would have this, you would have a point, right? An x, y, an input, output point that would come out, and we'd have the, part, the point, negative 2, comma, 10. So that would be like a plottable point. At any rate, that's just, that's the gist of this function notation, the use of it, okay? And so that's kind of, I wanted to get that out of the way so there's not a whole bunch of confusion on that. Okay, and we are talking about quadratic functions, and so what I want to show you guys real quick is, um, <clears throat> first of all, is just your basic quadratic function. There's something called a parent function. Okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, this little graph I have here on the right. Okay, let me make it, I'm trying to zoom in just to that. So we're looking here at this basic form of y equal to f x squared or f of x is x squared. So you could say it's y equal to x squared. Okay, or f of x equal to x squared. Other, either way. And this is what's called a parent function. In other words, every quadratic function or thing that you're given to to a graph is kind of related to this. If it's x squared, a second degree equation or, or function, this is the one that is the basis for all of those. And every other function you're asked to graph or, or deal with 
is some type of transformation or translation of this basic function. Some things we can see, we see that there is a vertex, there is some language for you guys, basic language, vertex. The vertex is that point of inflection, it's where the parabola, which is the shape of this, the curve of a, of a quadratic is called a parabola, the picture, the graph. The vertex is that center point, okay? Center point. And actually, we're going to spend a lot of our skills practice finding the vertex because a lot of answers to the questions in your word problems, a lot of, of the graphing and all is based on just finding this vertex. And so um, you're halfway there really through this whole section if you can get by and find that vertex. I'm going to show you how to do that in a bit. There's something else here. There's an imaginary line that if we took this graph and folded it in half along the dotted line that I'm drawing right now, if we would fold this screen and make the two sides of the graph meet up with itself, that would be called the axis of symmetry. In other words, the graph of a parabola <clears throat> is symmetrical centered at that axis of symmetry, okay? Now let me scroll down a bit. I'm going to write something for y'all. Let me make more room here. Okay, there you go. And so um, this, let me make write down this thing. Okay, so this dotted line I've just written here is called my axis of symmetry. Okay, now in the vertex, by the way, guys, your vertex, we're going to see it noted, notated as this. Watch. Hold on. I'll show you. All right. Make some room. The vertex, the center point, is the, the variables that we're going to use for it or H and K. Instead of X, Y, we're going to use the variables. I'm going to say the vertex is the variable H. And K instead of X Y just for vertex okay just some standard thing kind of like we labeled slope with an M you know for vertex we use H and K generally okay now knowing that okay does you may remember that's that goes with vertex right here okay axis of symmetry you may remember a vertical lines vertical lines equations or x equal to something remember those vertical lines equations when if you remember just that we had touched on that or given as x equal to some real number a I'll just call a it's just any real number okay it could be x is equal to 2 but when x is equal to some number it is actually an equation of a line so the axis of symmetry the line of, that represents that would be x equal to h. So if you can find your vertex, you can find the equation of the line that represents your axis of symmetry. So that's something good to know. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay. Another thing, um, let's go an another little fact about the vertex. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. With the vertex, if you'll notice, it is the lowest point. If your parabola is opening upward, notice right now it's opening upward. It looks like it could hold water. It's like a champagne flute, I guess you could say. If your parabola opens upward, your vertex represents what's going to be a minimum point, a minimum function value, if you will. Okay, and I'm just going to call it a point for now. Okay? There will be cases, though, when your parabola could open downward. When your parabola opens downward, and we're going to get into that in a bit, here's your vertex when it opens downward. In that case, it's not a minimum anymore. It's a maximum point. Okay, and I'm going to reiterate that in a bit when I get into, I'm going to go down a whole list in a bit 
we're going to actually do an example. I'm going to cite all this with a few notes on the side, just to kind of redo, re-go over this. But these are just a few of the things, of pieces of information that we can use in the word problems, for example. Or um, maybe you're asked uh, if a ball is thrown. If you look at the little picture I just drew here, this one that opens downward. Okay, looks like the glass got dumped out, right? It's open downward. If someone throws a ball from here, here's a little guy throwing the ball. And where does the ball reach its maximum height? At this vertex, okay? And so what you'll, you'll see is that H, K, H will be time, and K will be what the height is. And I'm going to go, I am going to do a whole word problem just like that, but with the height and all. Okay? And so this could be the maximum height. It could be a maximum value in a bank account. It could be anything in a word problem that has quadratic. Okay, so let's kind of go over here to the left, okay, back to the two forms of the quadratic uh, equation, all right, and so dealing with general form, <clears throat> I have um, some formulas written here for the vertex, um, so that, and this is that what I was talking about, where it, you, you, it's great to know how to do completing the square, but it's really not that necessarily, in, I guess it's not that vital if you have this, what I'm about to show you, down packed, okay? And uh, I'm going to show you how to go from general form and vertex form starting now, okay? And uh, let me see, um, oh, that's my phone, I'm going to have to decline that, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, okay. Um, ah, okay, so let me minim, I'm trying to uh, turn that down, let me turn that off, mm -mm. okay, all right, okay, thanks you guys, sorry about that, all right, so here is my vertex, okay, vertex we said was these two, was would be HK, those are my coordinates, okay, for that vertex, right, in other words, used to be, it still is, but there's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. We're labeling them H and K. Okay. And so back to my highlighter. Okay. The H coordinate, see if you can suss out your A, B, and C from your general form, just like you had to do for your quadratic formula, right? We, we always are going to have to pick out A, B, and C, the coefficient and the constant, right, that A, B, and C, we need those numbers, pull them out on the side, just autopilot, you're going to have to do that. Then if you could do that, you'll, you're almost there, you have your H coordinate, which is your X coordinate for your vertex, which is the opposite of B over 2A. Once you find that, you take this number and plug it back into the function you're given. So the function evaluated using the h value you just found gives us the second coordinate. Now I know that's like what did she just say? I got that. I'm going to do an example like right now, okay? Before I even get into axis of symmetry, that's easy. The axis of symmetry is just x equal to whatever I got for h, right? That's that's pretty simple. That's this. Okay? So let me hurry up before you guys, um, you know, before I drain your brain all the way and haven't even done an example, let's get an example of what I was talking about with the vertex. Let's find a vertex from general form. Okay, so let me scroll down and I'll begin with this example. Okay, let's see. Let me get my pen right. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to begin. We're going to take, um, let's see, example. Find the vertex. Right? HK of this form, this uh, quadratic, let's say the given function. And in case we decide to do a B here, I'll do one. I see a question really quick. Let me write this function. I'm going to get that question. 
Okay, so the first example is going to be f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 4. All right, let me get that question. So what you can do now before I answer this question is, is pull on this, go on the side and write a equals b equals c equals, okay? Okay, so yeah, it's the x-coordinate of the vertex, Viv. That's correct. The axis of symmetry is just that first coordinate of the vertex, except you write it as x equal to that whatever h is. That's correct. And Jen, for yes, this is basically the beginnings of how to get around doing the perfect square or completing the square. So yeah, it all ties together. And I'm, I'm going to show you where you would have had to complete the square to put it into vertex form. I'm going to show you what you can do. And that will probably be my next set of examples. It's the next topic I'm going to talk about. And so, okay. So, uh, oh, oh, I think another one popped up right as I minimized you. Let's see. Yes, that's in one of my examples, Stephanie. Okay, coming up. Actually, I'll do a B with that next. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this. So how do we do this? We want to take, we want to go on the side and put A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 5, C is equal to 4. Okay, and so then we begin to, you know, plug into the formulas that we had I had written above. Okay, let me minimize. Let me go smaller here a little bit. And um, let's see. I can't scroll. So let me see. Let me go up like this. I'm trying to get that visible. See our H and our K up there. I'm just going to rewrite it for y'all since it's uh, not giving me. Okay. So H, let me. This. Okay, so remember that vertex is HK, okay, where H is going to be the opposite of B over 2A. And this should look familiar. I mean, that is the, that's kind of like the front half of your quadratic formula. And then K is just, you can put instead of F of negative B over 2A, you can just write F of H. Whatever you get for this first value, you plug that back in. Let me show you what I'm talking about, okay? So first, let's find H, okay? So H will be the opposite of B over 2A, or what? The opposite of 5, I mean, excuse me, the opposite of negative 5 over 2 times A, which is 1. Okay, I just did the plug in there. So there's A, and there's, excuse me, there's, the op there's B in the parentheses on top, and there's an A in the parentheses on the bottom. So we have positive 5 halves. And so now k is just going to be the function evaluated at 5 halves. Okay? It's not so bad. Okay? So let's go for this. Let's, we're going to open a set of parentheses squared minus 5x, right? Plus 4. Okay, and then we'll plug in a 5 halves. Everywhere we have an x, we want to put a 5 halves in. Okay, so we begin to evaluate this. We have, what, 25 fourths minus uh, 25 halves plus 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we want a common denominator. Yes, we have to actually get the common denominator, which is not so bad, though. I'm going to put this in the gray. Let's see. So we want a 4 on the, in our denominator, so I need to multiply a 2 on the second fraction in the top and the bottom, right? And then remember that this is really 4 over 1, so we want to multiply a 4 over itself on the last fraction. Okay? And so back to this. Let's go back to the black pen. Okay, so we'll have what? We'll have 25 fourths minus, what, 50, right? 25 times 2 is 50. And then it has to, now it's over 4. And then finally, what, 16 fourths. And now you just subtract or add your numerators and put it over the common denominator. And so uh, let's see, we have, what, 25 minus 50 plus 16. So negative 9. 
Okay, let me get back to the good pin here. So now we have what? Negative 9 fourths for our k. Okay, so that's the y coordinate. Okay, so now that I've done all this, I can say that my vertex is located at 5 halves for my x coordinate or my h, negative 9 fourths for the k. It's not always going to be beautiful and perfect, right? Okay. Now, if you were going to plot this, you could make this mixed numbers, okay, for plotting purposes, but I would leave it as, if it's not asking you to graph the uh, function, leave it in an in improper fraction, reduced improper fraction form. That will be fine. And that's what these are. So there's our vertex, okay. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Um, let me do a B. We'll find a vertex of one more of these. Okay. I'll go to the right. I think I had some space there. Okay, yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm going to drag this over here. I'll okay, drag it down. There you go. Yeah, it's better. All right. So now, let's see. I'm going to do another example. Let's do a B. All right. So for B, I do one like y'all asked for. I'm going to see B. Let's let f of x, or i tell you what, I'll put it back in y notation. You're going to see them both, so I'll put it like this again. Let's have y is equal to, um, oh wait, let's see, okay, it's 2a, da, da, da. okay, I got one for you. We will have um, uh, negative 4x squared plus 2, okay? And so, all right, no, oh, I'm sorry, it should be 2x, excuse me. Notice there's no constant term on this one, okay? There's no c, and that's all right. So there's no c on this one, okay, as it's written. So now let's kind of uh, go into how do we go do this. Let's say our a is going to be negative 4, b is 2, and actually c is 0, all right? So, okay, now we go into finding our, our, using our little formulas we had for vertex, we said that H would be the opposite of B over 2A. Okay, so the opposite of B is negative 2 over 2 times negative 4. Okay, negative 4 is A. And so what do we have here? We have the 2's that cancel. The two negatives are going to create a positive number, so 1 fourth for our H here. And then k is just the function or this equation given to us evaluated at 1 fourth. So k is going to equal this, negative 4. We put 1 fourth in parentheses squared, right? Plus 2, open those parentheses, 1 fourth, right? Okay, and then you begin to sim just simplify that. Okay, so we have negative 4. Right, and then we'll have 1 16th, or you can put negative 4 16th, okay, eventually is what that will be. And we have what, 2 fourths. You can leave this as 2 fourths, by the way, because we're going to have to put a common denominator, right? Well, actually, I can make it a lot simpler. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Might as well reduce, you're right, I'll go ahead and reduce these. So if I reduce before I do my common denominator, make my numbers a little smaller, kinder, gentler numbers. You guys, I'm going to have to put this, put us on hold. The school is calling me. I'll be right back with y'all. All right, so let me minimize this and move it over to the side. Okay, so we can actually reduce. Let's do that. And so 4 goes into itself, what, once? Where's my pen? Get the pen working. All right, 4 goes into itself once, into 16, 4 times. And then look what we have here. We Now we have a common denominator, okay? So let's kind of leave it at that. Watch. So we're picking up where we left off here. So we'll have negative 1 fourths plus 2 fourths. I'm not going to reduce the 2 fourths while I need that 4 in the denominator. So we have negative 1 plus 2 over 4, okay, or what, 2 minus 1 is 
one fourth. Okay, so that is our k value. <clears throat> so now hk, right, we had h over here, that's up here, and we have k down here. So for this problem, the vertex is at one fourth, one fourth. Okay? So, um, all right. So it's basically, for finding the vertex, it really doesn't matter if it has a constant term. It's not going to make a huge difference for that. It will make a difference when you're going to find the solutions, okay, and or what we refer to as the roots in this section, okay. And I'm going to do, I can do examples of that right now if you'd like. Let me go ahead and do that with this one. If I would take B here. Okay, let's see, make some room here. Okay, here we go. If I take B and I ask you to find the roots of this one, okay, this function. When you see that, that terminology being used, find the roots, what they're asking you for would be the x-intercept, basically, okay? The roots. Let me try to get over a little more here. <clears throat> a little more room. I'm just wanting to look at this problem we just did here. Okay. For now. Okay, so if you're asked to find the roots, roots are just your x-intercepts. Okay. All right. That would be x-intercept. This is going to, the roots are where the graph crosses the x-axis, right? Incidentally, this is also, these values you would get when you look for your x-intercept are also solutions to corresponding quadratic equations. And so um, that's why, oh, they always have a y-intercept, all of them, every parabola that has a y. They don't necessarily have an x-intercept, though, but we'll get into that in a minute. Let's go ahead and get this one first, though. Let's do this one. I'm going to talk about all the intercepts today. So x-intercept, if you're asked to find the roots of a function, a quadratic function, you're just going to try to find the x-intercept. Basically, the root is setting y equals 0, okay, and solving for x. So how to, okay, you will set f of x equal to 0, or what, y equal to 0, same thing, all right, and solve for x. Okay, and so let's do that with this part B, this problem we have up here. Okay, so we have y is equal to negative 4x squared plus 2x. So if I'm asking you to find the roots, okay, find all the roots of this quadratic, okay. So what we'll do is replace y with 0. Okay, negative 4x squared plus 2x stays the same. And now it's become a quadratic equation to solve. That's basically it. Okay, so, so now we're just going to solve this. Okay, solve this quadratic equation. Okay, so that shouldn't be too hard. For this particular problem, we would go ahead and factor out a GCF. Okay, and look, you can put the zero on the left or the right. If you prefer to see it on the right, just do that. Okay, it's equation. doesn't matter. Okay, and so we can factor out a negative because we would like to have the positive leading coefficient, right? Two. They both have x, so we'll factor out a negative and a 2x. When I go to do that in my leftovers, the first term is going to become positive. If I factor out the 2, I have another 2 left in 4, right? And I'm taking only one of these 2x's, and I'll have, so I'll have positive 2x, that's for the first term. For the second term, it's positive, it was positive, I'm factoring out a negative, or in other words, I'm taking the opposite. So the second term will become negative, and I'm taking out the entire 2x, right? So 2x divided by 2x is 1. Okay, so I'm done with that factorization. I can't factor this any further. And so the other day I had told you guys that when you are using factoring to solve for an equation, 
any of the factors that contain a variable or that contain x, any factor that contains a variable must be set equal to zero. So in this case, we have two possibilities. We have this guy, really just the x, right? This has to be set equal to zero and solved for, and this binomial, definitely binomials, don't miss those. So we have two so, so solutions that are coming out of this, okay? So you can write it like this. Um, we can say negative 2x can be 0, or 2x minus 1 can be 0. Of course, divide the negative 2 off, and you have x equal to 0, which is a solution. And then here on the right side there, we'll just we'll add 1, right? These guys go. Well, 2x equal to 1 and divide by 2. Okay? And so... 2's cancel, and x is equal to 1 half. So there are my two roots, okay? So um, let's kind of take a look, okay? Just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going with this, with graphically, I'm going to just do like a really, really rough sketch of this, okay? Okay, since it's at 1 fourth, that's not too hard. Okay, let's say this. Let's kind of go like I'm going to go ahead and make this one, okay, two's way out here. I'm making this kind of scaled largely since we have a lot of one-fourth action going on. There's one, and here's negative one, okay? Okay, <clears throat> first let's kind of plot our vertex. Remember our vertex was at one-fourth, one-fourth, okay? So if this is one, and let me make my pen a little less fat here and I'm gonna go to a blue or something yeah that's fine okay so here's one half here's one fourth here's three fourths right one half one fourth three fourths okay so now this should be a little easier okay here's one fourth in that direction one fourth in that direction so the vertex is right around here okay now, I want you to notice something. Okay, now, this parabola opens up downward. We know this because I've sketched my vertex now, and my roots are located, by the way, what points? Let's see, the first root is at 0. We said that y was 0, so this first point is 0, 0. For the other point, where x is 1 fourth, that will be the point x is 1 fourth, and we had set y to 0, right? These are x-intercepts, so your y-coordinate 0. So let's plot that. Okay, first we have our vertex, 1 fourth, 1 fourth. Okay, we have one at the origin, which is 0, 0. And then we have 1 fourth, 0. Okay. Oh, wait, did I do this right? Yeah, let's see. 1 fourth, 0. Uh, okay. I messed up. What did I mess up? Y'all see where I messed up? Y'all help me. Let's see if you guys got this. Yeah, one half. Thank you. <laughs> You're correct. It was a good, simple mess up this time. So you you got it, Viv. Good job. So yeah, the one fourth over here should have been a one half. This one right here, right there. Okay. Not a big deal. Could it be? Could be worse. Could be worse. So look, this should be one half down bottom right side of your screen. I had to make that a one half. I'm so sorry. I was autopiloting with my with the school calling. Okay. Anyway, okay, so we plot that. Okay, one half zero will be right here. Right? And you can kind of see, okay, we know what the curve looks like, right? It's like an, this one will now be an upside down champagne flute kind of. Okay. Now, I want you guys to notice what happens here, okay? What is the difference between this one and, say, the parent function up above, okay? There is a difference. This one opened up like a glass dumping out, right? It's dumping out because the leading coefficient is negative. Do you see that? So we have a negative leading coefficient. In other words, A is negative for this one. When A is negative, 
you're going to see your parabola open downward. Okay, and when A is positive, you're going to see your parabola open upward. Okay, so we can put that with our notes above. Okay, so like I would add that here. I would say this. Let me get the pen right. Back to this one. Okay, and so here we go. When A is positive or greater than zero, right, positive, your parabola is going to open upward, okay, and so I'm just going to write opens upward, all right, opens upward, okay, okay, and it looks like this, it'll look like, say, a U-shape of some sort, okay, Okay, and so when A is negative, ooh, I should add some room. When A is less than zero or negative, your parabola opens downward. Okay, and it'll look something like this. Okay. Now, notice, okay, let me kind of draw in the vertex on these two parabolas I drew. So for this one, the first one I drew right here, A was positive, right, or greater than zero. For the bottom one that I drew, A is negative, right? The leading coefficient was negative. Now, I'm going to show, tell you something about a maximum and minimum. Oh, let me see what this question is. Yeah, I'm coming back to the y-intercept for sure. Okay, let me finish this point, though, since I just sketched it. Now, here's the deal. Like, you are going to be asked for maximums and minimums. When your parabola opens upward, okay, and your vertex is all the way at the bottom like that, you're, that's when you have that minimum. And we talked about that earlier. I said I'd mention it again. Okay, so we'd say that this is a minimum function value at the vertex. So we have a minimum at our vertex. Okay, and when A is opening down with the negative leading coefficient, this is when we have a maximum at the vertex, right? If it's the highest, it makes it the vertex becomes the highest point on the uh, parabola. Okay, something to remember, okay? Now that's your x-intercepts, kind of just giving us a bunch of stuff, the information there. Now we could also get our y-intercept for this, okay? And that would be basically just evaluating the function at zero, so finding f of zero. That's pretty simple, okay? So let me get a little room, and I'm going to write that over here, okay? And so let me kind of... This make some room here on the right. Okay. <clears throat> so we're asked first to find the roots, and now same example, I'm going to find the y-intercept. Since we found the x-intercept, we're going to find the y-intercept of the same problem there. Okay. So to do that, we set x equal to zero, right? And if I have, if I let, wanted to use function notation, by the way, and just label it, let's see, the same thing. Let me get some room. Okay. So for negative 4x squared plus 2x, if you want to find your y-intercept, you're letting x equal 0. Function notation would look like this. Evaluate f at 0. That's all it is. You're just plugging a 0 in for x and solving for y. Okay. And two times that. Okay. So now we're going to just do this. We're going to come down the line and solve. In this case, there's no constant term. And so your point for your y-intercept is the point 0, 0. See, it does have a y-intercept. It, it, just because one of them comes out to be the origin, that just happens to be the x and the y, an x and y-intercept in the same, okay? So yeah, it has it, okay? And so we're going to find some more of those in a minute, though. Um, 
let me go on to uh, answer some more of our questions, though. Because I need to kind of try to keep this a little lower on the time. So, um, okay, we got the gist of that. Now, I wanted to show you guys going from general form to vertex form. Okay, let's go back up to where we had those two forms written. Okay, so if you're just walking in or you're just coming into the uh, lecture, that's kind of okay because you're hitting it at a good time. So, um, okay. So again, I'm going to call your attention. Here's our general form. All right. Form. Rewriting over the red and black over and over again. Here's our general form. Again, here's your vertex form. <clears throat> okay. How You may be needing at some point to go from general form to vertex form. This is when you would need completing the square. Or... This is when you would need to just realize that the A in general form, here A I'm highlighting in green, is the same A here in vertex form. Okay? These two things are the same. So if we had a negative 4 in general form, then that's still going to be negative 4 in vertex form. We've, n we've now, we realize how to find H from general form, right? And now we know how to find K, right, from the general form. So we basically know how to find vertex form, okay? And so let me let me kind of get a little room to write. Uh, let's see. I have an example right here. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm not redoing something here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to do this example with you. Uh, it's not what I did yet. Okay, yeah. Let's take this one. Okay. Let me do this. I'm going to come back over here to this little page I had. And we'll just write it over here. Okay, so let's say I have this example. I want to go from... Get my pen, not the marker. Okay. So I want you to go from general form to vertex form. Okay, so here's your example. We're given, um, let's say we're given y is equal to um, x, oh, sorry, 2x squared plus 12x plus 10. Okay, this is in general form, right? Okay, now let's say we want to write this in vertex form. Okay, so directions would read, write this in vertex form. Okay, so how we go about that? Let's, let's talk about it, okay? So, <clears throat> what do we know? We know A is equal to 2. B is equal to 12, and C is equal to 10, okay? What else do we know? We know that we can find, we know what vertex form is, right? Let's go ahead and write that out. Now, general form, by the way, was what? Was Y equal to AX squared plus BX plus C, and then vertex form is this y equal to a, open parentheses, x minus h squared plus k. Okay? Now we can find h. We know what h is. We know that h is going to be from the general form, right? Let me put that a little arrow. h is going to be the opposite of b over 2a. And then k is just the function version of that evaluated, right, f of h, whatever we get from h, we plug it into the equation. Let me get rid of that h I wrote down there. Okay, so we, we have a lot of, of knowledge on this, so we can go ahead and do this. We know that vertex formula, basically, is what I just gave you with hk. If you know the vertex formula, you can do this. So let's find h. h will be what, the opposite of B or the opposite of 12 
over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. The opposite of 12 over 4 is what? Negative 3. Whew, an integer. What do you know? Okay, to find k, we're just going to plug k, we'll plug h into the equation, right? We'll have 2 open parentheses squared for x, right? Plus 12x open parentheses plus 10, and we're going to come back and put that negative 3 in, see what the, the function value is, right? Okay, so what do we have? We want to go ahead and square our negative 3 first. So we have 2 times 9 plus, and then 12 times negative 3. So instead of plus, I can write what? 36, right? What? No, oh, wait. One more, Karen. Okay, minus 36. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. Plus 10. And then what? 18. Let me get my trusty little calculator. Back up my calculations. Even though it's just addition and subtraction, I don't want to mess up. 18 minus 36 plus 10. Okay, and you should have negative 8. Check my answer. Yeah, negative 8. So we should get negative 8 in the end. Okay, so now we know from these calculations we have the vertex is at what point? The point 3, negative, negative 3, negative 8. Okay, check it out now. Here we go. Let's go into this vertex form. We now have all the information we need to write this equation from general form into this vertex form. So let me scroll down a little bit. So finally, in conclusion, the vertex form of this equation would look like this. And be careful with H, by the way. Notice H is subtracted. So you may have to write it first and then simplify it a little bit. So what was A? A was 2, right? We have 2, open parentheses, x minus the h. What was h? Negative 3, right? So minus a negative 3. See what I mean? That's what I want you to be careful for right there. And then plus k, right, or plus negative 8. Be careful with that. See, so we can write it like this, and then we'll come back and write it one more time and clean it up, make it look nice. So 2, or x plus 3, squared minus 8. Voila! We have it in vertex form. Okay? And this is it. I mean, when you have, when something, if it's given to you in vertex form, you can you see that you'll have your h Really, it's opposite of h, right? h is what's being subtracted here, and k is being added. So you can get these the h and the k from these two parts. And of course, a is the same. All right. So that's pretty much the gist of, of it for that one, okay? That's basically what you need to complete the square, okay? That's kind of... I don't know. It doesn't have to be hard, okay, is what I'm saying, I guess, basically. If you can find the vertex, you can put it into vertex form, okay? Um, if we go back to that first example we had, that one was in general form, okay? And then, let's see, let me scroll down. Let's see, let's find it. Like right here, okay, this was it right here. We had found this vertex, right, for A here. We said that it was where? At 5 halves, not negative 9 fourths. So just incidentally, I'm going to go ahead and write this one into vertex form, okay? And I'll do that with a green or something. Let's just kind of get this on the side here. So if I wanted to take this function and write it in vertex form, let me get this thing out of my way. Let's see. Get out of my way. I got the little go to webinar doohickey in my way, vertex form of this equation, which is given to us in general form, would be what? y, or f of x is fine too, is going to be a, which is 1, so we just go ahead and open your parentheses, a can be implied, right, x minus h, right, minus a positive 5 halves, we'll just stay minus 5 halves, squared, plus k, so it's plus a negative 9 fourths, right, or what, minus 
nine four. So the only one that, in the form of vertex form, the only one that really displays sign differently would be the H. Notice H here is positive, right? H is positive five halves. So in the vertex form, it's represented with the X minus five halves. So you know, if I gave you a vertex form, and I said, well, give me the vertex from that. You would have to kind of be careful with that. Watch, I'll show you an example. So given the vertex quickly from vertex form. Okay. So if I say this, um, let me get this one done quick and I'll move on to uh, some of the other problems we were talking about. So if I say give the vertex of this function. Okay, and let's say A, I give you Y is equal to uh, 2X minus 4 squared plus 1. Okay, so the vertex for this one would be what? Okay, let me add just a little more writing room here. Right there, yeah. Okay, so the vertex for this one, for A, would be what? H is going to be what? Remember, it's minus H, right? The format we're looking at is this, x minus h, right, squared plus k. And of course, that's a. All right, so let's go back here and get my color right. All right, so now x is going to be, h is going to be 4, okay? All right, see, so it's x minus 4, so the h is positive 4. And then the K is the same as whatever sign is given to it there. So it's just one. Okay. Let me do a B just to kind of give you something to, to kind of, you know, bounce that off of. If I give you this, let's say Y is the opposite of X plus 2 squared minus 3. Okay. Doesn't matter what sign is on A, right? We're looking just for the vertex. You're in vertex form, you're only looking at this guy and this guy, right? So remember that, though, in vertex form, <clears throat> one more time, we have what? A, and then we have X minus H, and then plus K. So whatever the K is, that's the sign it's going to have. It's the X plus or minus inside. That's going to be, the, when you give the answer, the opposite. In other words, H is going to be the opposite of whatever is appearing here. So negative 2 is H, and then K is going to be negative 3. Okay? Simple as that. Don't, don't overthink it. That is what it is, and that's all it is. So that's your vertex. Okay. So, um, all righty. So um, if we wanted to go ahead and graph these, that wouldn't be too hard to do. Now we have the vertex. You know how to find the axis of symmetry, which is just that center line, the folding line, I like to call it. And you know how to find your zeros or your roots. It's, you know how to find intercepts. It's the same as it ever was with linear. You do the same method. It's just the solving of it. The simplifying part is different. Okay, let me scroll down and get to the word problems. Um, let me make sure I've kind of gone through everything i got a little graphic that's going to help me remember. We went over maximums, right? This is a parabola. I'm looking at the little graphic I have here. Okay. And um, let's see. That's pretty much it. The zeros, etc., etc. Okay. What I have here is an example I wanted to show you. I kind of did this one the other day, but um, so it's kind of done here, but so I'm not going to develop it for you right now, So, but I, we can look over this, okay? What I have is the basic function, the basic parabola is here I've highlighted. Let me highlight it in yellow, okay? So there's your basic parabola with the origin. The vertex is at the origin, okay? And so that would be f of x is just x squared, or y equal to x squared, okay, that's right here, okay, now in green, okay, if you look at this first example here, right up here, where 
x squared minus 2. This is the one that's graphed in green. Notice what I've done. I've basically just taken the parent function x squared, right? The outside of the x squared, though, off the end of x squared, not inside the parentheses, but outside of the squared. I subtracted it too. So basically, what I've done is I've taken the basic function x squared, right? Let me get that. There we go. So I've taken this x squared, right, and I've subtracted 2 from it. Now look what's happened, okay? If you look in the graph there, okay, in the graphic, here's what's going on. It's taken this basic same function shape as my centered one, the one centered at the origin, and it's taken it down to units. It hasn't shifted right. It's not. It hasn't gotten fatter or thinner or anything. All it's done is taken your basic paraboloid and shifted it down two notches on the axis. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that's what that that's done. that's called a translation. Okay, so it makes sense if we take in the the parent function x squared and we take two away, we're going to get two less in that on the x, on the y value. And you notice, okay, by the way, I have this, the, in here, let me, let me circle it in black because I want it to be confusing. Right in here, I have, these are the, the, this is an XY chart that I got from my basic parent function there. Now, when I apply this formula to where I subtract 2 from it, this is the new output. Notice instead of 404 from my y's, I get 2, negative 2, 2. Right? I've only subtracted 2. Okay. So that shifts it down to, and if you would be adding 2 to the parent function, you'd be shifting it upward to. Simple as that. Now, the weirdness comes when we shift left to right. Look at this one here in red. Okay. I'm telling it that... I called it g of x, which is the same, you do the same thing as f of x. So I said g of x is just x plus 3 inside the parentheses squared, okay? So when I take the x part of that function and I add or subtract something to it inside the squared part, here's what happens, okay? It actually shifts the basic parent function shape left or right that many times. But it's going to go in the opposite. In other words, if I'm adding a 3, like in this example, inside the squared part to x, right? Adding 3 to x. Adding 3 shifts it to the left 3. Shifts it left. That's so odd, you know? So um, it is opposite world when you're inside operating on that x value, okay? So when we're adding or subtracting to x inside parentheses, like in this example down here, it's going to actually move it left or right the opposite of what you would expect, okay? So notice I added 3 to the x, and it shifted it left x, translated it to the left. And if I would subtract 4 from x, if I would have x minus 4 squared, it would shift it to the right, the basic parent function centered at the origin would shift to the right 4, right 4, if I'm subtracting 4, right? So um, here's what I'm talking about. So if I have this example, I'm kind of at the bottom left-hand side. There, let's kind of make it bottom left, and I'm going to move down a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make a little example here. All right right here inside of my squiggly box. So if I wanted to graph y is equal to, say, x minus 4 squared. Here's my axes. Try to make them a little straighter-ish. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. All right, so Parent function was what? Let's see. The parent function I'm going to do in gray here was, let's see, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. The parent function was about like right here, okay? I'm trying to make this a little more curvy, sorry. <laughs> okay. Should be a little more curvy than that. Sorry about that. There you go. 
ugh, okay, I'm just totally like annihilating that. So you you catch the drift, I hope. Okay, so there we go. And so now I'm going to do a blue for this one. Okay, so notice we've taken our parent function. We're taking the x of that and we're subtracting 4. Instead of going to the left 4, though, when you're operating on that x inside those parentheses, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. So the shape of the graph doesn't change, right? Just wherever it's centered is changing. So this would actually translate it over to the right four units. Okay? So we're going to graph that. Okay? So one more time, let's do make that an A. Okay? And I'm going to do a green B. Let's have a green one for B. And just to go back over the other one, if I have Y is equal to X squared plus 3. Notice I'm taking the parent function y is equal to x squared, right? And I'm just bringing it up 3. That's all this is. So instead of at the origin, I'm going to go back to look at my parent function and compare it to that. I'll actually take that shape and shift it upwards 3. 